everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the Captain Kirk of the USS Matt Men, Rich Stamboli. I like that. You are like my that. Captain Kirk. I love that. I like that. You are my Captain Kirk. What's going on, I like man? That. You're my island boy. <laughs> I am your island boy. I'm just an island boy. <laughs> oh, no. Did you saw those dudes? Oh, no, what little you. turds? No, thank you. I They're flush, little turds. I want to flush those guys down the toilet. <laughs> they came from. They came up the toilet. <laughs> if there was, you remember years and years ago where uh, Limp Biscuit used to do live shows and they would sh- their stage set would be a giant toilet. Yeah, I want to flush those guys down that giant toilet. The Chocolate Starfish. Mm-hmm. Fantastic that, album. There you go. Fantastic album. What's up, dude? What's, What's up, my going island on? boy? <laughs> What's going on, my island boy? Uh, nothing much, man. I had a crazy week. Uh, I was at the Exotica convention over the weekend. <laughs> so good. So good. Ex- Exotica is a, a more pervy Comic Con, basically. Uh, yeah. 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 It, a lot of cosplay. <laughs> a lot of crossover. A lot of cross. A ton. Dude, if I. <laughs> Shout out to the horny Matman fans that were there. Shout out to the horny Ma- <laughs> and shout out to horny Harry. He was there. Yeah, horny Harry, the best dude. I, you know what? King. <laughs> we both felt like we got caught at like one of those like like peep shows. When in I the catch city. you looking at the Excel sheets, and <laughs> yeah, the slam, yeah. slam the laptop. When I'm looking at numbers, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> oh. oh, it was up by ten percent. I'm like, oh, what are you doing in here? <laughs> uh, no, dude, it was. Um, Harry was there. <laughs> uh, Love and that, like man. we kind of crossed. He was covering it, and mm-hmm. I was there for work also because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a couple clients there. So he was, I'm sure he was covering he was, it. He was covering it. So uh, like I'm walking and he's mm-hmm. like, holy yes, Andrew Zarian. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, and I look at him dead in the eye. I go, holy F, horny effing Harry oh Tarjanian. Oh. What are you doing here? And full then name, I, huh? Full name. And I say it as loud as I can. And uh. we were in front of Tiny Taxi. Oh, she okay? was right next to you, right? She was all the way at the end. Okay. And I looked to my side and his girlfriend was there. Oh, yeah. She's and, great. And then now I was like, he's not really that horny. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. just like a thing we said. Like, uh, I didn't know what to say. She, she was cool as shit. Like, really, really cool, <laughs> cool person. Uh, oh, it was so it, it was an event. <laughs> I'll say that. It was, it was a lot of fans. A lot of Matman fans were there. So if I ran into you, mm-hmm. I appreciate it. We took photos. I had... Um, I had adult film star Jesse Jane come over. Jesse Lee come over mm-hmm. to me and was like... So, like, why are these people taking photos with you? Yeah, she's jealous. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like uh, I do this thing. I do this wrestling thing. I do this podcast. He's like, she's like, I honestly thought, like, it was, like, from, like, the business. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not in that business. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You should have been like, yeah, I am the new up-and-comer. I'm a new up-and-comer at 38 years old. Emphasis on the comer. <laughs> nice. Beautifully done. Thank you. Beautifully done. I appreciate it. Guys, tons to talk about with professional wrestling. I had a hell of a week. I was kind of MIA Friday to Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, It was was a very hectic weekend, so I missed a lot of the news, and I got it later. Yeah. The entire Charlotte and Becky story, by the way, has become a tremendous thing. So good. uh, Over the weekend, and I have some stuff to talk about with that. Bray Wyatt Mm -hmm. stuff, Wyndham Rotunda, I should say. Uh, I have Wyndham news. I have uh, Ring of Honor stuff. There's tons and tons to talk about. But Rich, why don't you talk about how people could fund us? Guys, check this out. So we got a couple of ways you could fund us. Number one, um, we have a really jam packed show today, and I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of questions. If you want to shoot your, you want to get your questions answered when we do our Q and A first in line, we are gonna answer the super chat questions first. So you can shoot super chat us any amount you want. Uh, we'll take your question. We'll throw it into our notes. Boom. It may even show up on screen at some point because we're trying something new here. Uh, like I said, you can super chat us, whatever you want. We'll answer your questions first. Also, if you want to support the show, uh, we've been working very hard on Patreon. Very hard. Uh, Patreon, you, you, and, you and MG mostly. Uh, yes. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mattman Podcast. Uh, our tiers start basically at $2 and there's a ton of tiers over there. We're going to bring you all, all sorts of new monthly content, show notes, uh, blogs, Uh, Geek and Destroy from MG Geek, and we're working on some new stuff, so check that out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, We've been getting some good compliments on it, too. Back to you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich Mm Stambolian, with that beautiful plug. Uh, Let's let's talk about Ring of Honor. Um, Let's start off with a conversation from a few years ago. Sure. Do you remember a couple years ago, there was a story going around that it was WWE was very interested in buying the library. Yes. This was when, you know, you, they started, NXT was really ramping up with mm-hmm. a lot of people that were in Ring of Honor. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Owens, 
Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, and plus every AJ Styles, CM Punk. I mean, they've always wanted mm-hmm. access to that because it's such an instrumental part of their early careers for yes. these guys. And for a lot of people, listen, Brian Danielson was a Ring of Honor guy. I, I mean, that's yeah. the first time I discovered this dude. Staunch Ring of Honor. Yeah, definitely. So I know that they were interested. I don't know how far they went into this. I had heard, and this was years ago, that when WWE was buying the libraries, mm-hmm. they were paying, uh, I, I, I want to say like $340 an hour. Wow. Okay, per per con whatever the content was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we did the math, and I think we figured out for like TNA, if they had bought the archive, mm-hmm. it was it wasn't this astronomical number, right? You know, because they they ran hourly shows, and then they were on for mm-hmm. two hours for a while, then it went back to one. So um, I, I don't know how much it made sense. I don't even know if that's the current number. This is years ago. Like I'm talking when they were buying early, you know, like the, when they were building the library. So yes. Ring of Honor was always something that they wanted. Um, I asked around tons of people, and whenever I asked anybody, the answer was, well, it's not openly for sale, but it's always for sale. You know what? I, it was like yeah, one yeah. of those. Absolutely, yeah. And it was so many people that said that to me that made me think this was inherent within the Sinclair organization. They're like, listen, if a mm. right offer comes, absolutely, but that's everybody. You know, that's everybody's story. If a right offer comes, you, you're willing to do it. So- Ring of Honor, the last hurrah, and we've been talking about this, Rich, for, for a couple of years. Yeah. That MSG show was a tremendous indicator on the future of that company. A hundred percent. I also think all in the first one was an indicator as well. It was both those shows, but that New Japan Ring of Honor split show, let's be honest here, that was a New Japan show. Well, they sold out. Yeah. They sold they sold the event out because of the anticipation that you're going to see Kenny and the Bucks more than anything right. else. Then the New Japan stuff, like you said, huge part of this. Yeah. Would would they have been able to sell out the show if they didn't co-promote it as a New Japan show and it was just a Ring of Honor show with New Japan guys on it? Possibly. Maybe. Maybe. That's, you a, know. that's a strong maybe. You know, like this reminds me of when they did All In, right? And I remember listening to Bubba, I think, on Busted Open. And he was like, Ring of Honor, I'm, I'm, this is not verbatim, Ring of Honor kind of shit the bed in the regard that they helped them so much with that initial production, but there was no real credit done on the, on the show. Really? Right. Okay. That first all, yeah. that, that had like all the banging matches, everything. They used Ring of Honor's infrastructure, like their technical infrastructure to shoot it and film it and all that stuff. Yeah. Where Ring of Honor was never really mentioned. And I think that hurt them. I think I, I I definitely think they were under the impression they would be involved if this continued. I, I don't think anybody mm. really really realized what the scope of pro wrestling would be in 2020, 2021. Yeah. You know, 2019, 2020, 2021. I think the last three years have been extremely unpredictable for everybody, you know, including us. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, a pandemic coming into play really changed the trajectory of this entire business. Uh-huh. And on top of that. Roman Reigns, for example, I don't know if we would have the Roman Reigns that we have today if the pandemic didn't happen. I don't know if we would have the positioning, you know, uh, that we have. You know, what would have happened if CM Punk debuted in 2020? That would never have happened. No, it, it was going to. Yeah. Uh, well, if it, the pandemic didn't happen, right, it right. probably would have. So would Dan- would Brian Danielson have come over? Now, I, these are all fascinating outcomes. But one thing is for mm. sure... The the path of Ring of Honor was kind of set in stone after that New Japan co-promoter show at the Garden. Do you think, I mean, we talked about this a lot ad nauseum years ago, but where we are now in terms of Ring of Honor, do you think that drainage of Cody, the Bucks, Adam Cole, Marty, and their relationship with New Japan put a real dent in their operation? Y- yes and no. Um okay. I'm having I'm having some audio issues here. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, you're really low and I'm really loud, and mm-hmm. it's never and I can't get the balance, and then I phase. I'm phasing in and out of your my, your your mouth, Rich. Do you want me to just get louder? Just get very loud. You want me to start yeah, talking you like know this? What? If you could get louder, that would be excellent. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'll use my uh, yeah. I'll Thank use my booming outside. Yeah, voice. please, please use your booming oh, outside boy. voice. So, uh, Elis, you were at that show. 
I can't it. begin to tell you how many people were walking out during that Matt Taven match. You know, that's very unfortunate. I understand. Considering the main event was Okada. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but also like the garden has that weird thing. I can't speak for any other venues across the country or across the world, but the garden has that very specific thing where we've left stuff early because the train to our houses is literally 30 feet below where we're yeah. sitting. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. Like you walk down two. Yeah. Staircases. We leave all the time. We leave early to, for stuff. You walk down two staircases and you hop on the train and you're home. You're home in seven minutes. Yeah. You know, um, you before me. Yeah. So like, I think that has something to do with it. I do feel bad for Matt Taven because I feel like I remember reading a lot of stuff where folks were very poop, very poo poo on the match and on the guy himself. There's a lot of Matt Taven fans out there, you know? Yeah, sure. And also the, another weird thing about that show was that Enzo brawl. The Enzo brawl was, mm. I thought that was great. Same here. I, and I, I have to tell you a lot of people, um, a lot of people took that as like, well, they're getting into storylines. I, I, I think they had to evolve. And they've known this for a while, and people within Ring of Honor have said this to me, mm. uh, like personally have told me this, Ring of Honor needed to evolve from where they were because they realized what was happening. Mm. They were very much aware that, you know, Kenny and the Bucks and all these guys and Hangman, these guys are gone. They can't really heavily rely on New Japan talent because we don't know where that's going to go. And right away, we know Ring of Honor and New Japan have not had a relationship right. for quite some time right now. So... They 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 wanted to evolve, and people crapped on it when they saw Enzo and Big Cass come out, and they saw the beautiful what was it beautiful people? Angelina Love was there, yes, right. Yeah. Uh, whatever they call them there, they showed up. People got very upset because it's not the traditional wrestling, but yeah. they were very aware that they needed to go beyond it. Well, here we are. Yeah, uh, pandemic happens. Ring of Honor actually does a tremendous job at doing those close set shows, right. Uh, the pure tournament was done very well, but unfortunately, here here's the biggest problem for Ring of Honor. What channel are they on, Rich? <laughs> no, I'm asking. What channel are yeah, they on? Yeah. Do you know? I can't tell you because we don't get it. Comet? Yeah. I think Comet. Comet? Right? I think it's Comet. Is, I think. Is that near HGTV? <laughs> I don't even know what channel Comet would be on here. Mm. Um, They're part of Sinclair which has tremendous syndication across the country, but they mm -hmm. never gave a national, like a really strong national presence for them. There yeah. was the idea when they bought the tennis channel, they were going to convert that into a sports channel and that would be their flagship show. That didn't really happen either the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. So there were all these like, never commitments with Ring of Honor. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it wasn't their fault. Most of it was not their fault. I would no. say that a lot of this was Sinclair and budgeting and all that stuff. However, they mm -hmm. continued throughout. Um, they're on CW in some places. I don't even like being from New York. I have no idea what freaking channel they're on and what time they're on. I end up having to watch it randomly. You know, this this whole thing with Ring of, Ring of Honor is it's very interesting because we're going to look at this through a different lens now. You know, and we haven't even gotten to the story, right? We haven't even gotten to the story. We're gonna like we're gonna we're gonna look at this through a different lens, and you know, you can say what you want about what I'm gonna say next, but it's fascinating how the Bucks and Kenny and Cody had the wherewithal to create something spectacular while they were in Ring of Honor. Yeah, but because of, I guess, the malaise of the company. They went somewhere else and did what they were going to do ten times, th a thousand times better than yeah, they that, absolutely than they would have done in Ring of Honor. Yeah, you know? absolutely, hundred um, percent. You know, Ring of Honor's always been raided. They've been gutted. Mm -hmm. uh, they've always survived because of the talent that they've had. Right. But you know, now that talent's going somewhere else between NXT developmental, mm -hmm. between WWE, between Impact. Uh, it's it's crazy. Impact is like in a major position now in Very North America as yeah. a promotion. Yeah. Uh, AEW and an AEW has like dark and dark elevation. There's always a place for these young guys to go Absolutely. for exposure. And really, Ring of Honor was not doing it for them. Listen, I, I it, it's sad considering. Yeah. Now the, here's the story. As of December 11th, final battle is the last event. Uh, for Ring of Honor, they're going to be suspending operations. There'll be one set, one last set of tapings in November, mm. planning on returning live events in April during WrestleMania weekend in Dallas. Okay. Sinclair wants to rebrand it to be more fan-friendly product. I don't know what that means. Yeah. 
are you softening it? I mean, I think Ring of Honor was pretty damn fran- fan friendly. Absolutely, yeah. Considering it was all fan driven, it wasn't marketing or PR or corporate interests. It was all fan driven. You know, you can also make the argument of a juxtaposition between PWG and Ring of Honor. Um, uh, as far as fandom goes, as far as yeah, fandom yeah, is, and I think GCW is now that taking that position. Yeah, they're they're coming up that ladder. Yeah, um, Sinclair wants to rebrand it to be more friend friend friendly product. Here's my thing, okay? And then we'll go... Uh, I'm going to skip this. If... Generally, if you stop operations in something and say you're coming back in a couple of months, that's mm-hmm. never a good thing. Right. Never, ever, ever a good thing. That means that, A, you're running out of money to support it. Two, you don't know what to do with it. Or three, you are actually taking time off and you figured out that this is the best strategic move that you could do. Right? Yeah, Absolutely. I don't, if I was Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if I'm not Ring of Honor, if I'm AEW uh-huh. or if I'm WWE, I will make a serious attempt for the library. A ser- Because think about it, if you kill the promotion, mm-hmm. right? And, and here, here's a little business, right? If, if Sinclair said, okay, we're shutting down the promotion, it's over, right? It's done. Your value in your assets plummets. Right, because you no longer are a commodity that I would want because you're a dead brand. So you're gonna you're gonna devalue yourself by whatever percentage. Yeah. If you say, hey, no, listen, we're just we're just pulling back operations. We plan on coming back. We're rebranding in a big way. You are gonna maintain some sort of value in your assets. Right. Now, here's the other part of this: they're dropping everybody from contract at the end of the year, as of December 11th, the final show. Right. But- right. And then I guess end of the year it continues, but. So you have no talent on contract. Mm-hmm. You're going to do per hire, like how like an Evolve used to do, right? right? You're probably going to borrow from other promotions like Evolve used to do. So how do, you, how do you maintain a champion? How do you maintain your titles if you're going to run weekly TV? Yeah. Evolve didn't run weekly TV. That's fine if you're running once every couple of weeks right, or once right. a week on the weekend for like an iPay-per-view. But if you're running weekly shows and you're going to run a couple of house shows on the weekends and you're going to do tapings like that. This is going to be very difficult for them to do. I want to, this is going to be interesting going forward. Um, and I think, you know, going by what you're saying, it doesn't look good, right? I think where that tape library ends up is going to be the real meat of this. Well, that's going to be a big story because yeah. right now, AW's building their own, not a network, but they're 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 building oh, yeah. something right now with right. with archival footage that will become like their network. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what? You're talking about debuting that soon, and I know Tony said that they're working on it and they're going to come up with a place. I mean, you want to kind of take a hit to WWE and their their concept of becoming archivists mm-hmm. and the ones that tell the story of professional wrestling because they own all the rights to everything. Right? Wouldn't this be a great get for them? To get the footage for Ring of Honor? It would be a great get for them to get the footage for Ring of Honor because then you can get those very classic promo style clips of, let's say, Adam Cole, the Bucks, and Kenny, right? Seeing them in Ring of Honor working together, doing the Bullet Club stuff, having those clips, right? Not only that, but what's to stop Tony Khan from saying, hey, listen, I'll give you $2 million for that library. And you know what I'm going to do? Here's another $2 million. Why don't you pick yourselves back up and do what Vince did with uh, ECW? I don't, because he doesn't need him. Okay. Vince needed ECW. Why doesn't Tony need Ring of Honor? They already have a developmental setup. Mm-hmm. They, like, they don't talk about it, but that's what Dark Elevation is, and that's what Dark is, right? Mm-hmm. They have a place to debut these young guys. They have that property. They don't need Ring of Honor to grow the talent because they could do it internally. Mm-hmm. Um, Vince needed ECW because he, he was afraid of WCW. And he wanted to keep it fresh, and he wanted to ke- and he wanted to keep that line open between the two. Yeah, and, and Paul and him had a history. You know, Paul Paul met Vince when he was like fourteen years old. Yeah, he would, he 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 was a photographer at the garden. So mm. I don't know. I I find it very interesting. I find the whole thing tra- fascinating. Uh, Charlie in the chat room actually, and Rich, this goes back to your point. It kind of makes sense. ROH does have the dojo, but they also have yes. the, they have the you know they have the. Uh, the, the nightmare family, you know, that they QT Marshall's training ring of honor, uh, mm-hmm. AEW guys anyway. So uh, the value of ring of honor existing on television is really plummeting. 
right every day i i don't know what the future of this company is or even if they do rebrand what the hell are they rebranding as an indie group yeah with with a decent name you know this is very tna-esque impact desk yeah it's it's gonna be fascinating watching what unfolds if anything unfolds if know? anything unfolds if any, i think that's the, the other thing too you know like you can't wait for something like this to happen because you never know like it, it we may get to january 2022 and nothing happens you know just like the y2k virus just like the y2k <laughs> virus it never shows up nothing, nothing. Uh, we got nothing yeah i mean how would you reimagine roh looking that's tough you know because i feel like there's such a so many di- different dynamic looks in pro wrestling right now. I, you know what? I want something either really stripped down and minimal that looks very eye catching, or something completely effing futuristic. Interesting. Something that looks like Tron or some shit like. Maybe that. they go backwards. Maybe they go like old school boxing ring. Like, oh, that'd be interesting. But you know what? You know what that reminds me of? NWA Power. Hmm. You know, like that. Stu- they're doing the studio stuff. AWWE yeah. are doing the big stuff, you know, like GCW hard, is doing man. the homegrown stuff. Very hard. MLW is doing like kind of an in between thing. Lucha Underground already happened, so like you have to kind of figure out something new or something that's never been done before. Which I, you know, like I hope they can do it. Uh, another interesting thing to come out of this is that the talents are allowed to work anywhere immediately, and knock on wood, they'll be paid through the end of the year. Yeah, so that's interesting. Um... Listen, I, I, who, who's their top? Who are they top guys now? Ro, uh, Roosh, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bandito, yeah. Dragon Lee, mm-hmm. uh, the Briscoes, Briscoes which King. the Briscoes could go. You know, I think the big story here is the Briscoes. Briscoe They're in GCW. Anywhere. Yeah, I don't know if WWE's going to touch them because of the. I forgot which brother said this, but he went on. He said some racially insensitive or racist stuff i don't remember Whatever, exactly yeah, yeah. what he, oh homophobic stuff it was homophobic something it was, i think so um you know they because wwe was getting them they yeah. were gonna go to wwe they were very interested but not with that new mandate right i can't see the briscoes debuting on nxt especially after their you know we don't no, want guys no. over 30 blah 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 no, I, they, they, you know aw has a tremendous tag team division I mean, it would be another great tag team to add. They'd fit right in. They would fit right in there. They'd fit right in. Imagine if, uh, like I was saying last night in the group chat, I really love how that TNT title has such purpose on the show because of the challenges every week, right? Yeah. Now, what if you did that for the tag belts and that's how you bring the Briscoes in? Yeah. I, I mean, here, here's, the, here's the talent list, right? You got the Briscoes. Mm. Uh, Great tag team. Kenny King. Great. Great. Bandito's the champion. Great. Uh, Jonathan Grisham, I think, will end up. Jonathan Grisham is interesting. I, I th- There's a lot of positivity on his side. I, I'm going to say MLW. MLW? Okay. Yeah. Roosh, you got um, Dan Housen. Dan Housen, I can see in AEW. AEW. Yeah, WWE's not. Roosh Angelina also. Love, I don't, maybe, maybe goes to Impact. Okay. Roxy, the women's champion. Mm-hmm. Jay Lethal could go anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, and Brody King. <sighs> I want Brody King in AEW. Like, Brody in King in AEW. Way. Okay, cool. Wasn't Brody King uh, tag team partners with... Brody King, wasn't he tag team partners with Malachi Black? I think they're the GCW tag team champions. They are, right? Yeah. Okay. No, they're not GCW. No, no, no. no. Uh, where are they? They were something. Maybe. I don't know. I- I'm very confused. I don't know where I am anymore. So... This is the Ring of Honor story. I think this is a big, big deal. Um, They're PWG. PWG. PWG Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good boy. That Thank was you. good, Rich. Thank you. No, uh, I saw it was in the chat. Thanks, Joe Pearl and everybody else. It was like PWG, PWG, PWG. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> how about Ethan Page? Uh, Ethan Page. Uh, Ethan Page. EC3. <laughs> I don't know why I went Ethan Page. Uh, where's EC3 going to go? Impact. Why not? Okay. Why not? Fair enough. You know what? I have to tell you, that guy really effed up how his wwe career went you think he effed it up no no no, not him yeah. not him how, it's effed up how it went yeah they, he was a tremendous get such a get such a great like, talker I don't, great talker great body he was in that ladder match mm-hmm. that was that was the most high profile thing he did he was at, it was a ladder match when he first came in crowd was behind him they did nothing you know what it is it seems like wwe has such a hollywood style approach to their talent where all it takes it doesn't matter if you're talented it doesn't matter if you could talk well or you look good all it takes is somebody to like you listen i got i got it you mm-hmm. ready this is how they do it 
hit it. MJF is cutting a promo, blah, 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 mm. blah. You know, he he's the whatever. All of a sudden, Dixie Carter walks out Ooh. and goes, you know what? You're nothing compared to my nephew. The one- my, because he's it's the same gimmick, essentially. He was the one percenter, right? He was the one percenter. Here comes e- e- EC3, and now you have MJF and EC3 in a program. Fantastic. I would love it, and I want Dixie on TV. And then they I don't care up. what anybody says. I didn't care for Dixie on, on Impact or TNA. Didn't care for it at all. I want to see Dixie in everything now. I want Dixie in WWE. I want Dixie everywhere. Well, that's the fun. I think that's the fun thing. That, that is the fun, yeah. With AW and even Impact are doing now is like, you can do those, those one-off throwbacks, and it's not going to matter. You know, like you can have them Dixie show up for one thing and then they get into they have like a best of five, whatever. And then they end up becoming a tag team. Yeah. Yeah. Hot head in the chat. EC3 should have been a slam dunk in WWE. Absolutely. Uh, amazing. So Smackdown. Uh, I was in. I was in. Uh, You're in a dirty hole. I, I was in. the. I was. I was. At, there, there are two places I call the center of the earth. Okay. Florida is one of them. Uh-huh. I refer to Florida as the center of the earth. Whenever I get fed up with New York, I threaten. Uh, Jessica, Uh that I'm moving the family to the center of the earth. She knows exactly what that means. Uh And Exotica. Yeah. Center of the earth. But but when you say center of the earth, I want to clarify for the people watching, you mean like where all the mole men live. Like like wildness. Crazy. It it was nuts. It really I I got I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like an after dark episode of Mat Men. I think for the next watch along we do, I'll go into ever the entire experience. When was the last time we did one of those? I don't think we're allowed to anymore. You, I think our, our, our agent would be very disappointed. I think you're right. Yeah. We got so wild. We got an agent now. We got managers. We got agents. We got mm-hmm. everything. They'd be very mad if they, we did it. <laughs> you know what? what? We could do like a half a uh, after dark. That's our handler. He's That's sitting our on handler. the couch right now. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. He's just doing this. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Brock Lesnar gets suspended. That opening segment, 40 minutes, man. <laughs> Crazy, right? It was great. It was great. It was I gotta, great. Listen, guys. Like, for all... For all the crap WWE does wrong, right? Like, and and we all could could recognize it. Even mm. even the guys that are so one sided could recognize the negatives. This was when they do when they do it right, they do it perfect. It's funny we say that we've said that ever since we started the show. Like when they do things right, it's, it's so, so great. How do you like uh, Redneck Rave, Brock Lesnar? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. He's bonkers. So Brock killed everybody, whatever. F5, uh, Adam Pierce out of his pants, literally. Uh, great segment, great opening. And then you have the utter opposite of this. And the travesty that was the title exchange segment. That was the main event. So uh, for anybody that's been living under a rock, Charlotte and Becky mm-hmm. were doing the stupid belt exchange. Yeah. Apparently they did this during... Like, they were practice. Right. They were going through, like, what they're going to do. And Charlotte thought it's stupid. Right. Which it is. Mm-hmm. There, uh, There's nothing dumber than two people handing each other a title belt like that. Gotta it really, strong. It, it's so stupid. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, mm-hmm. if that's what you're going to do, you're just going to hand the title. Why not just have an official hand it? Right. Say, okay, now Charlotte's here, and then here's your title, and here's Becky on Raw, and whatever, and you just do the title thing. This is, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why? Yeah. Why not? So, huh. whatever. They do it. It's a disaster. Belts are being thrown at each mm. other. There's a whole thing happening backstage. They get into an argument. Now, the story is that Charlotte was escorted from the building. Mm-hmm. Now, how you define that, like, when I asked about that, because that was what that was the thing I was curious about. Like, first yeah. of all, there were reports that she yelled out, I'm going to see Andrade and AW. She never did that. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. She never said that. She never yelled it out. Um, now, escorted out the building. I, how do you define it? Was it like aggressive, get the hell out of the building? No, it wasn't that. People think it's like it, it, they imagine the stone cold hands behind the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, like not crap, it's not that. It's not that. Not that. Listen, not that to, to take away from the scenario here, yeah. but. I said this on um, on uh, the show with Denise and Garrett that mm. I did on Tuesday. We're live, pal, every Tuesday. So I called up somebody and th- I said, listen, can you give me some on the record? Give me mm. because I talk to this person off the record yeah. constantly. Right. And I don't want to. And he, they say a lot of things and mm. I don't want to. I don't want to. I said, give me an answer on the record. And he goes, man, it got people talking, huh? That was his on the record answer. Say that about anything. 
right? <laughs> so, I mean, as far as PR goes, mm-hmm. it seems like they were they were thrilled. <laughs> yeah, I, more eyes on the product. Right? More eyes on the product. People were talking. It became a thing, and now I'm sure they'll turn this into something on Friday. Yeah. If they don't, I, I'd be shocked. So, they that was the response I got. It's man, it got people talking. It was all over. People were buzzing. It's fascinating because I feel like there's so many layers to this as a fan and doing the show where part of me thinks Vince got off on it. You know, he's like, ha, yeah, confrontation. I like that. Confrontation breeds creativity. Ha, ha, ha. Right. Yeah. The other thing is, listen, if this is Charlotte's slow burn plan to get fired, way to go. I don't think so. Right. If I, she's just like, you know what? I'm Sean Michaels in it right now. I don't care. I want this. I want that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it, here it, the smear campaign with Charlotte is interesting to me. It, it really is. It really is because yeah. there are people that generally hate her. Yes, and I think they hate her because of the way she looks. For well, like not 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 anything visually wrong. Like they don't like her presence. I think but, it's a multi layered thing. It's the way she looks, her presence, the fact that she's with Andrade, and the fact that she's Ric Flair's daughter. By the way, she's also a character on TV. Exactly. You know, like let let's let's kind of remember this, right? Like yeah. the same stuff with like Sasha gets or what like. You only see mm-hmm. a character. Right. I don't go around saying, you know what? Marishka Hargitay <laughs> is a really irresponsible cop. She's a terrible detective. No. Detective, <laughs> detective Benson breaks the rules. Marishka Hargitay is an actress. Mm-hmm. So you like my uh, SVU reference? I love great. SVU, by SVU's the way. SVU's on. I freaking love SVU. It's on right now. I, it's on every day, all day on every channel. And I freaking love it. Uh, Yvette. Mm-hmm. Uh, California yes, 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 Spencer's yeah, yeah. vet. Uh, I got her a signed copy, an original signed copy of the entire script of the first episode by the entire cast. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a good because she's a huge SVU fan. That's a great way. One popped up yesterday with Bradley Cooper and uh, my man Al Molina. Oh yeah, a lot of people show up on that show, which is I, you know like, I can only watch it for ten minutes at a time. Oh, it's fantastic! It's always the same. And a nice iced tea coming in is like, yeah. yo, <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, you know, he does like his weird voice. Yes, he does have a weird voice. Guns. We played with guns when we were five. And then he goes into <laughs> and he goes bum bum. Mm-hmm. Um, I I got to separate the two now. <laughs> you know, Charlotte and, and and Ashley are two different people. I don't yeah. know Ashley personally. I just see what I see on TV, and I think she's a great act. Yeah. And pe- some people don't like her. That's that's great. You shouldn't like her because she's a bad guy. Right. But some I think you know like the the problem with fandom and especially with wrestling is like. People will love you to death until you cross that line of the fans not knowing what's real and what's not, you know? Charlotte's a great example of that. People think that that is her, right? And there's so many folks that sit online all day waiting for wrestling news, you know? A lot of them DM us like 24-7. And they look at her and say, this is a real person, I can't stand her. They look at the young bucks and go, these are real people. Cody, Cody. Cody. We'll talk about the Cody stuff later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Charlotte is getting lumped into. She's in that Cody category right now. <laughs> she is in that Cody category. Um, what time is my train? I believe you're. You want to take the eleven fifty seven? Is it's, that what I'm taking? Okay. It's never going to change. It's this eleven fifty seven every week. Is that is that is it the eleven fifty seven? I can't remember yeah, what my schedule it's is. The eleven fifty seven. Okay, cool. Um, so I, we'll see what happens with this, but mm. I think it's very interesting. No, it's fascinating, dude. Um. I want to see how this plays out, but I do, I do personally think like this, maybe I'm getting played, you know, cause I'm a dumb Mark, but I do think it's like the slow burn of like, you know what? I'm going to see what I could do to get fired from here. They got rid of my dad. They got rid of my husband. Yeah. What's left for me? You know, I'm a 13, 14, 15 time women's champ. Like, yeah, I'm going to go somewhere else. I don't know, man. I, you know, <sighs> Would you be upset if she showed up on AEW? No, it'd be fantastic. I think that'd be a great get for AEW. I think that'd be a tremendous, tremendous get for AEW. Do you think it would elevate the women's division? 130%. Charlotte Fair versus Serena Deeb? Uh, anybody. Thunder Rosa? Uh, oh, Hikaru Britt Shida? Baker? Britt Baker? Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, fantastic. I think that'd be a tremendous get. So, uh, you know, that was the situation. Sonya got involved. I don't know if that's how true that is. Mm. So the, the story was um, she's isolated herself from the locker room. You know, it, it's, I can't verify anything because these are just right. hearsay and rumors. Exactly. And I hear this stuff and I, I'm going to say this is God's honest truth. On a weekly basis, mm-hmm. somebody 
like names yeah, yeah, yeah. will contact me mm -hmm. to talk shit about somebody in the locker room. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get this constantly. We don't report it because a the lot nonsense. a lot of it is just like a little bit of manipulation. You know, like the you they and this happens a lot, you know? Yeah. Uh, and you kind of have to get used, to, you kind of have to learn what's, what's BS and what's real is that you'll get contacted about a story and they'll tell you to contact somebody else to verify it. They're in on the story and they just want to bury yeah. somebody. This happens constantly. So I don't know how much of this is true. I, I, I believe the guys that are reporting it, they're not, they're, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Sean had a story. Dave had a story. Uh, yeah, PW. Who had it? Uh, Mike Johnson had it. Was it Mike Johnson that had the story originally? Whoever it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these guys aren't making it up. But I, I can't verify it, and I don't really go into that stuff. So it is what it is. Right, right. Uh, Raw highlights: Fatal Four Way Match. Seth Rollins won the match over Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Rey Mysterio to earn a title shot. So now he's set being set up as the number one contender. They set up Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair for next week for the title. You know, uh, for Raw, you know, Seth is the last person on that list that I wanted to win that match. Who would you want? Uh, uh, I wanted Ray to win it. That would have been cool. I would rather see Biggie take on Kevin Owens, Balor, or Ray than Seth Rollins. But see, why? Why? Why don't you want to see that? I feel like the other guys would be a more fun match. You know, like I don't. I I'm I'm a little done with Rollins. I have, I've been done with him for a year and a half. Like, I feel like, not that he missed a step, but character-wise and, like... The Messiah stuff you're not into. I'm Well, not even that. I'm just, like, you know, for me, he lost that step. But guy's great. He's athletic. He's a great talker. But there's something that's just, like, a little too... It's a little too much Rollins. Yeah. You know? I got it. Pull it back a little bit. Like, yeah. remember when they were blowing up Sheamus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, ah, I don't, enough already. Are you hot? Can Holy I turn God. this off a little yeah, bit? Yeah, you can turn Okay. Man's always hot. I'm the opposite of that, that Big Shaq song. Uh, AEW Dynamite. Let's talk about this. They were originally going to be preempted on the West Coast. Okay. NHL has, permanent, has a permanent 10 p.m. East, 7 p.m. Pacific slot. Mm -hmm. Now, instead, instead of preempting what they're doing, they're, they're moving it earlier. So it's airing live mm -hmm. at the time that it's on on the East Coast. Right, right. So it's now going to air live nationwide, 5 p.m. Pacific, which is better than the time that they were originally going to run mm -hmm. at, I think, 10 East or whatever, whatever it would have been. Right. What time would that have been for them? 10 East? No, it wouldn't have been. It would have been it would have been really late because it's what if they did 10 o'clock on the West Coast? No. Well, NHL has a 10 p.m. East, 7 p.m. Pacific. Right. Yeah. So they would air 10 p.m. Pacific. Right. And then which would have yeah. been terrible right this is a little bit better yeah so it's a lot better they're airing at 5 p.m pacific which by the way i freaking love to watch this at 5 p.m oh dude or like, just like dvr it at five and then uh, watch it when i get home dude me and you are so simpatico when it comes to early we gotta wrestling. we gotta move to the west coast that's, what, so that's you know that's the problem we gotta move to california i tell you the story man when, again ad nauseum when we were in vegas man the we best. were so happy that wrestling was on early it was so tremendous it, it really was it changed our lives it, really, it did. really did. Like, we can't stop talking about it. Yeah. We were like, man, you remember that early wrestling? Yeah, man. <laughs> so WWE released their schedule for the year, their pay-per-view schedule, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And you could kind of fill in the blanks here. Uh, this is the 2022 schedule. Mm -hmm. Saturday, January 1st, which is my daughter's birthday. Uh, that's good. We'll have a Saturday party. Oh, here. that's very sweet. Yeah. Uh, day one at State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Saturday, January 29th, the Royal Rumble at the Dome at the American Center in St. Louis. Very nice. At the America's Center in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So there's a little gap between January 29th and Saturday, April 2nd. Expect a Saudi Arabia show in the middle of there. Because, uh, you know, I think we reported it. Mm -hmm. Or we may have second. I don't know. Whatever. But we, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago. They're going to be doing a show first quarter. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia. Most likely... I would say probably February sometime. Yeah, those shows pop up like Michael Myers, man. Yeah, February or early March. So they'll be doing it. They do pop up like Michael Myers. <laughs> uh, Saturday, April 2nd and Sunday, April 3rd. Two night WrestleMania at the AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, not really Dallas, right? It's Arlington. Uh, two night WrestleMania. I, I, I still don't know how I feel about this. Two night, night WrestleMania? Yeah. 
Then we go back to Sundays, May 8th, pay-per-view at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Delicious. Uh, we're going to have a Sunday pay-per-view again, June 5th at the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Saturday, July 2nd, we got Money in the Bank. Stadium show, mm-hmm. July 2nd. So here's where it got weird, okay? Yeah. They announced this Money in the Bank at Allegiant Stadium in Vegas while we were there at SummerSlam. July, Mm -hmm. why wouldn't they go for SummerSlam? And to me, that meant, oh, okay, you know what? They're going to go to Europe. That's what I said immediately. Yes. Yes. I'm like, oh, they're going to do SummerSlam in Europe. There we go. uh, In England, right? Um, Instead, only 28 days later is SummerSlam. Yeah. <laughs> uh Saturday, July 30th, same month, at the Nissan Stadium in 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 Nashville. We're gonna try to go to this, right? Which one? The Nashville one. I would like to go to Nashville. All of us, like all yeah, the yeah, mad yeah. boys. Yeah, yeah, and the wives too. Because yeah. my wife loves Nashville. No, I'm not taking my wife. No wife? No. Me and oh. MG are gonna split her. Just you and MG splitting <laughs> her. All right. Uh so here's the other thing. Saturday, September 3rd, or Sunday, September 4th, there is a pay-per-view to be announced. Likely, it's going to be the UK. Great. Um, the two leading places were Wembley and in Wales. I forgot mm-hmm. the, 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 the stadium. Mm-hmm. I, I know it was reported most likely they were going to Wales. If you're going to England for the first time for a mega show like this, you kind of want to be in London for travel purposes for uh accessibility purposes for media coverage and everything so if i'm gonna take an intelligent guess here Mm. i would say they're probably gonna end up in london interesting all Uh, right that's that's my guess yeah i I agree with that uh anthony collins says it's millennium stadium in cardiff that's the whale show cardiff yes millennium stadium in cardiff but they have not locked that building right i don't know why they would prefer to go to wales over going to london And, and nothing against wales or anything i'm just saying uh, mm-hmm. ease of ease of everything. Uh, you're not a big fan of the Welsh. I love the Welsh. <laughs> I love the Welsh. Mason Ryan's headlining that pay per view. By the Mason way, Mason Ryan is headlining every pay per view. Uh, so September 26th. I'm so, I'm sorry. November uh, September 3rd. Mm-hmm. There's nothing set for October here. Great. Which will most likely be a Saudi Arabia. Another show. Another Saudi show. So we got a Saudi show Popping in October. Up like Freddy Krueger. Right. Yeah. It does pop up like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I thought it popped up like Mike Myers. We can we can keep okay. going. It's spooky right. season. Oh, it is spooky season. Uh, we did not get dressed up for our Halloween show. No, we didn't. Today would have been it. Kiss. We were going to do kiss makeups and start kissing just, live on just, the air. Just imagine us in kiss makeup. Yeah, just picture it. <laughs> Some, someone, hold on. Just look. Move the mic. All right. Somebody Photoshop us with kiss makeup. Uh, who are you? I want to be the star child. I want to be Ace. I want to be uh, Paul Stanley. Yeah, I want to be Ace Freely. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Ah! There we go. There you go. Someone's doing it. Uh, November 26th, Survivor Series at TD Garden in Boston. There's only one garden, guys. Stop calling it garden. Yeah. There's only one garden. There's going to be another garden in Vegas, too. Yeah. So that's the schedule, mm-hmm. and I'm loving these Saturday pay-per-views. Same here, We buddy. got our dream. I mean, we've been begging for this. If only they started at 5 in the afternoon. Now, now only, <laughs> only if they start at 5 in the afternoon on Saturdays, I'm fine. The dream. Do you want to fly to the West Coast for just pay-per-views and watch <laughs> it there love and then to do fly that. back? I would love to do that. Love it. So uh, that's the schedule moving forward. Uh, some Bray Wyatt news. So mm-hmm. uh, I didn't talk about this for the last couple of weeks. A lot of people wanted to follow up on my report. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be careful how I say this because a lot of stuff was filled in when I, t- when I specifically said, like, don't fill in the blanks mm-hmm. here. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, you know, th- 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 we continued down this path of, like, why the hell did WWE release Bray Wyatt, right? His contract is up uh, on Friday. Yeah. He teased out. He put out a tweet that said two more days. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Wyndham Rotunda is a tremendous athlete. Yesterday, he tweeted. That. Yesterday, yes. Uh, Wyndham Rotunda is a tremendous athlete, tremendous performer. Great, great creative, cool guy. Uh, I think people thought that I have a problem with him. You don't. And, and and I said, I'm like, dude, this is not my words. Right, right. I'm just repeating something that was said to me from someone within WWE. Right. That I have no intention of thinking they're lying to me. However, right. I think there there may be some filling in the blanks here. Um creative liberty as far as how it was said maybe yes you know what i mean absolutely can we can we we just like really define that 
Okay, can I, can go, I help you do yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we have a source who's great. Multiple. Multiple. <laughs> but this person has been on the money. Fantastic. Like Andrew said, as close as you can get. Very that's close. Not, very close. That's not like but I do want to say a preposterous idea had, of who it is. You I had know, multiple. <laughs> I had multiple real journalists. Yes. Like I, I always. I'm not a journalist. I, I do this because I have fun and this is entertainment. Right. And due to my connections in in media and mm. in the industry, uh, I have a lot of friends in the industry that are put are in positions that would know things. Yes. And some of these people. Quite honestly, not this person, not the person that we're talking about here, right, right, right. but outside of WWE, some of these people are, are, they don't give two shits about professional wrestling. Exactly. And it's a microcosm of a thought for them on their daily basis. And they just like talking shit to me. Right. When we go out for drinks. All right. right. That's pretty much <laughs> the reality of, of the scope. I'm not, I don't actively look for scoops or call PR or do any of that. It just, right. sometimes I have a lot of information. Sometimes I have way less. That's just how it works. It's the process of, oh, that's interesting. Do you mind if I reiterate that at some point? During yeah. The week? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Okay, you know. so, so now, now go ahead, Rich. Okay, so that being said, I know you have nothing against Bray Wyatt. I, just I, think I love him. No, I think it's I, weird I that love... people came down on you about that. I don't know, man. And you know, I, I've been... I got bummed out by it, to be honest. First time I've ever said something on the air like that, yeah, that I've yeah. really gotten bummed out because uh, I had somebody reach out to me and be like, yeah, mm -hmm. dude, like, I don't know, like, do you have a problem with Bray? I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I thought I made it really clear. Like, it's not my words. Right. I'm not repeating. I'm not, there's no personal opinion on this. Yeah, and also, who cares and, if you have a problem with And <laughs> I'm just saying something that was said to me. Yeah. And I was told, like, yeah, this is fine. You could, you could, you could mention this. Mm -hmm. Listen, could could some people say that it's sour grapes? Yes. Uh, could could there be on truth? their end, not your end? On their end, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, uh, sure, absolutely. Th yeah. There's an argument for that, right? Um, but there's also an argument for other things that was said to me, mm -hmm. and I will say once and for all, there was no one cause. And if if the the narrative that this guy, this highly popular creative performer mm -hmm. was released due to budget cuts i'm very confident to tell you that that is utter bullshit okay okay i i will i will say that much now whether i whether there were personal problems or whatever mm -hmm. and, and animosity and creative challenge or whatever that's it, it's i don't there was no one thing uh, maybe on bray's side it, it, and when he talks about it when when Wyndham talks about this i'm sure he's going to be very vocal and be be clear about it but I'm just saying from what I have been told from sources, there was not one cause. There was, there was numerous reasons to get to this point. Now, whether that's on, that's on Wyndham's side, which, listen, I, I'm sure this guy's going to leave. You know, he left. He's going to go somewhere. And he's going to do everything in his power to make it work. Mm -hmm. Because he, he just, he's made everything work so far. They handed this guy a spooky gimmick that most people would die in, right? They, they would not survive yeah. in, in his character. And this guy propelled it into something that was a big deal. So wherever he goes, I'm very hopeful that he's going to do well, but he's ready. Where do you think he's going, man? I would love to see him in AEW. In AEW. Okay. I feel like I, I would love to see him in AEW also. For a guy that has that much talent and creativity, why not? But at the same time, is that too much for that roster? Who knows? Um, maybe it's all a big swerve and he's coming back to WWE on Monday. Or, listen, Impact could use a guy like that. Impact could use it, but I, I, he needs... I, listen, where are they, what, if he goes to Impact, I don't know. What is he going to do in Impact? How mm -hmm. many people are going to watch him on Impact? 100,000 people? I think... You know what? Just legacy wise, AEW will take care of him better. You know, of course. So let me just say this one other thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when I when we said this a couple of weeks ago, I got reached out by a bunch of legitimate journalists. Okay, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Dude, that's not what I heard." Okay, okay, and they told me what they heard. Uh -huh. Everybody was told something totally different. Fascinating. Okay, very which is very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Everybody that that I spoke to, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I, I, I would love to be wrong. Mm -hmm. I would love to be wrong, and I would love the reason to be that it was a, a financial reason, mm -hmm. but this company 
is making more money than they've ever even thought about making. So how much of a financial reason could it be that Bray Wyatt, one of your hottest acts, uh, is not cutting the mustard for you? Right. I think you can understand it in a weird way when it's Gallows and Anderson. Like you could understand they because they paid them so much. Well, they paid them a lot. Yeah. Also, like, what's their what's their merch? What's their gimmick? What are they selling? Right. You know, like, is Gals and Anderson going to sell Gals and Anderson masks? No, Bray, Bray is. Right. You know, like, it, it, and by the way, Gals and Anderson needed to get out of there. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're having a time of their lives right now. So, but I, I, I will say, everybody that I spoke to was told a different, had a different idea. Mm. So. We'll find out in a couple days. That's all. I, I mean, and, and I, I really, I, it really upset me that people thought that I have a problem with Bray. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, the dude is fantastic. Like in every possible way. I, I, I love the character. I, I want nothing but the best for him. And I was like, yeah, that's weird that it came off that way. Really weird. All right, Rich, where are we going? Uh, so if we want to get out of here when we're supposed to, do you want to quickly do AEW and then jump to question? Um, I could get on the 27. The, tw the, 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 the uh, 12, 12, 27? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's continue in that case. How did you like... Oh, actually, no. We have a little more housekeeping. Oh, yeah, here. we have Sean. Sean. Uh, Sean Michaels revealed that he is operating his VP while Triple H recovers from his uh, his thing. His heart issue. His heart issue. Um, yeah. yeah, I asked about it. They said that he's recovering great. Um, it looked like Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breger will be added to the European tour. They will have a triple threat match with Sami Zayn for the NXT title. Interesting. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. All yeah. right. This is Braun's uh, first tour. It's a nice test, by the way, these European tours. I think so. Um, it's a test to see how, how you do. He's only 24. He's only 24 years old, and he's a, he's a Rick Steiner. How did you like Halloween Havoc? Uh, the show was fun. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a fun show. Very different show. Did you like the Chucky thing? Uh, you know what's amazing? When when WCW did Chucky mm -hmm. at the end of WCW. Yeah. It was, I, I don't think, you know, and our audience is a lot younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you guys realize what a joke it was. Like, people, it was like, this was the jump the shark moment. Oh, people hated it. The finger poke of doom, Chucky. Like, these were mm. all jump the shark moments. Yes. Another weird reference. Jump the shark. Happy days, baby. Jump to shark.com. TV guy bought that company and that guy became a millionaire. Wow. Um, do you do you know why it's called Jump the Shark? Happy days. Happy days. Yeah. A lot of people don't know Fonzie, that. Fonzie, there's an episode in Happy Days in its long tenure where <laughs> Fonzie, super, Fonzie's supernatural. He is supernatural. He was the original Undertaker. He would snap his fingers and stuff would happen. He'd knock into stuff and stuff would happen. He'd like touch a girl and her shirt would fly off. Yeah, yeah pretty and much. All that. Um, so there's one episode where Fonzie somehow is on water skis and he jumps over a shark and it was pretty much the nail in the coffin of the show. And that is why we have the term jump the shark. Did they have water? What year did, did Happy Days take place? Late 50s, early 60s? It was supposed to be 50s transitioning into the 60s. They had jet skis? Well, he was, on a, he was, he was uh, water skiing. Oh, water skiing. He was okay. being pulled by the boat. Yeah, he got wasn't it, on a got jet ski. He, he wasn't on a rocking jet ski. I thought he was on a rocking like that would have been cool. Like a Kenny sea Powers jet like ski. Like a sea do. Yeah. <laughs> uh so Chucky narrated the opening by running down the card. He was used. So mm -hmm. I got a friend of mine sent me a screenshot, like a picture of uh the Chucky in the locker room. Oh boy. So I, I tweeted, I'm like, Oh, be, did you you saw the tweet, right? I'm yes, like, yes, Oh, yes. imagine if he's sitting in the locker room. Mm. Uh so he was in the locker room while Braun was br working up. Uh, we had Gigi Dolan. Uh, do you want to run down this card really quick? From uh, yeah. Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. You, right. You're quicker at it. So, uh, Chucky narrated the opening. I like uh, I like that Brad Dorff is still doing the voice of Chucky. Uh, oh, still the same dude? Still the same dude. Oh, get yeah. out of here. Brad Dorff's a fantastic actor. I didn't man. know that. That's yeah. great. Same dude. It's been the same dude since day one, and he's the voice on the TV show. I think there was one thing. I think the movie, the remake from a couple of years ago, I don't think he did the voice in there. Okay. I think it was somebody else. Uh, so he narrated the opening. Um, is he, this the movie with the non-binary child? I didn't see it. The, you, it was the remake. Okay. Oh, the remake. You know that they he has like a non-binary kid. Who, Chucky? Yeah. Yeah. I did like, not know they, that. Doesn't, like, yeah, yeah. There was like a whole storyline with this. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Chucky. Chucky. Huh. All right. Uh, so 
he's the one who's spinning the wheel. I found it more fun last year when it was Shotzi. I would take Shotzi over Chucky. Absolutely. So we see Chucky in the locker room with Braun Breaker while he's warming up. Pretty funny. Uh, we had the opening match, which I really enjoyed. Gigi Dolan and uh, JC Jane beating Io Shirai and Zoe Stark. I've come around to Zoe Stark big time. Uh, versus Indy Hartwell and Persia Perota in a Scareway to Hell ladder match. Um, good for Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. It, it's like the first title for the Toxic Addiction. Yeah. A Toxic Addiction women. Um, EO fell off that ladder. Pretty Hard. hardcore, dude. Ooh, yikes. It was, ooh, it was, de- there was a lot of ooh, yikes moments. Oh, in that match. In the whole show. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of like weird, like, I don't want to, I hate using the term botches, you know? Yeah. Let's call them flubs. Flubs. Blongo. All right. Joe Gacy beats, uh, Malik Blade. How do you feel about Joe Gacy? You know, I, I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. I I'll want see. him to wrestle our friend Joel Pearl. Y- you want him to wrestle Joel Pearl? Yeah. Um, you have the haunted house segment with Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. They tr- they go to Dexter's house. So Dexter lives in like a seasonal haunted mansion. Apparently, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought Dexter from like Showtime Dexter. No. <laughs> uh, so they're looking for the title. They're set up by Gargano and Dexter. Uh, next, you have the uh, debut of the young Uso Solo Sokoa, and uh, he runs off La Knight and Grayson Waller, who were both dressed like Draculas. They were Dracules. They were Dracules. Vampires. Um, this is like the third Uso brother. I feel like they should hot shot him, put him with the bloodline. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think it takes talent to play Frankenstein? Oh, absolutely. It's all old makeup and grunting. No, I think uh, I think the portrayal of Frankenstein in the original Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, of Boris Karloff. You think it takes talent to play Frankenstein? Fantastic. It's all old makeup and grunting. <laughs> <laughs> I think Karloff I... does not. Do... <laughs> Love that scene, by the way. Ned uh, Wood. I think uh, I think Karloff is under. Watch that movie. Karloff is friggin' amazing as what? Uh, the original Frank. Ed Wood. No, not, oh, okay. not Ed Wood. Watch Ed Wood too. Ed Wood's a good one. Um, and also watch uh, Christopher Lee's Frankenstein because it's a very different take. And now, Dracula. <laughs> Dracula. All right. Uh, what do we have here? We had Roddy Strong beating yes. Odyssey Jones. Uh, not ma- title match. Yeah, very weird. Why? All right. And, but but the champion won anyway. Yeah. So why why did you make it a non title match? I, this was like a weird moment in the show where I did the dishes. Okay. Uh, Mandy Rose beat um, Raquel Gonzalez in a trick or treat street fight to win the title. Raquel Gonzalez came out like the American badass. Yeah. On like a neon motorcycle. <laughs> uh, Mandy Rose won. It was a all fun right. match. I like Mandy Rose with the NXT title. Toxic Addiction has all the gold for the females now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you also had to return to Dakota Kai. She was the she was under like uh, like a druid hood and interfered to cost Raquel the title. And then you had the main event. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa came out dressed as Kratos from God of War, which was pretty fantastic. I definitely popped. Uh, beating Braun Breaker in a friggin' like really hard hitting match, man. So Braun looked great. Yes, uh, you could tell he's still getting there. Right, mm-hmm. twenty four years old, still green. I think this was a mistake. I think Ciampa should have lost the title. Um, yeah, you know, this would have been a moment to make him. He had a ton of viewers. They did tremendous with viewership on the show. I think the peak viewership was like over 800,000. Mm-hmm. They settled in the sevens. Uh, very good viewership for the show. Makes sense. It was a Halloween Havoc. And by the way, it was ge- day. It was game one of the World Series. Crazy. So they went up against the World Series and still did tremendous. I mean, very good numbers. They did very good numbers. Uh, I think a lot of our uh, our close friends and um, Matt Men followers were tuning in between both the World Series and NXT. Okay. And we live in an age where you can do both. And you can do both. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You have so many monitors here that you can literally watch whatever everything. you want. This I can like, watch everything. It's like that scene in Back to the Future 2 where, uh, where Marty's kid sits down and he puts on all the different channels. All right. AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this this week? This is this week. This is this week. Okay. CM Punk with his long pants uh, defeated Bobby Fish. Now, this was a weird match. I liked it. The, very hard hitting. Yeah. The finish was interesting because CM Punk hit him with the go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Bobby Fish kicked out at like. Kicked out at three, baby. Kicked out at three. I It told it, a story. It told. I hope that it told a story. Uh, I hope they continue this where Bobby mm-hmm. Fish is like, you didn't beat me, dude. Because his his shoulder was up before three. Mm-hmm. So if they're going to tie that into another match, I think they could do another match. And I, I would be happy with that. 
I think this is a good rub for Bobby Fish because he had a he had a banger with Danielson. Then you have Bobby Fish in this kind of Dean Malenko position where he's working a body part, and Punk yeah. is working a body slam. Yeah, he, he that body slam is over. So him messing up the GTS, the knee that he does the GTS with, I think is the story where he did it with the other knee. He did it. He but he was so hurt that he couldn't get the pin on time. It wasn't a quick pin. So there was a delay kick and he kicked out at three. I think that was a great story to tell. Old school. And, and you, when is the last time we saw a kick out at three? It, oh, kick out at three always reminds me of Hogan. It, it's always like Hogan. It's always like that generation where you kick out at three so you don't look weak. I think there was a few Triple H ones too. A kick out at three? Gotta yeah. kick out at three, brother. Uh, MJF with Warlord and Sean Spears. Squatch Bryce Donovan. Uh, Sting shows up with a baseball bat. Darby in the crowd as the Invisible Man, not Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget, Gadget, dude. I don't think MG's ever seen Inspector Gadget. (laughs) He he used to watch a cartoon. (laughs) Um, MG is Inspector Gadget. Um, Darby as the Invisible Man. Yeah, but you don't want to know what body part comes, like, does (laughs) does a boing. (laughs) Just one nipple. (laughs) I thought that was fun, man. Sting, it's been 30 years. This guy still doesn't know how to use a baseball bat. No, not a clue. (laughs) He'd be a murderer at this point if he did. Yeah. Don't ever tell Sting how to use a baseball bat for real. Uh, Sammy Guevara beat Ethan Page. Dude, what a match. Yeah, great match. By the way, I, I just noticed last week that that title is different. Did anybody else notice that that TNT title got an update? It's all blinged out in the middle, mm-hmm. the center plate. Yeah, it's like the spinner belt almost. Yeah, Sam- Sammy looked great. Ethan Page looked great. Men of the year attack afterwards. Inner Circle makes the save. Jericho reveals that it's a street fight of full gear. Uh, next week, they will reveal who from... America, America's top team. Mm-hmm. I think I think they've been calling it American top team. Mm-hmm. Is joining Men of the Year TBS Championship tournament continued. Uh, Sheeta defeated uh, Deep Serena Deep. Great match. I Great enjoy match. this. Yeah, Serena attacked uh, after the match, injuring mm-hmm. Sheeta's knee. So that's yeah. going to play into something. AW World Championship Eliminator tournament. John Moxley murdered Preston oh, uh, Vance ten. Dude, like Moxley going to the ring, there was some dude in the way of the railing. Was there? Yeah, I didn't see it. He had, he like pulled him and then kicked the railing open, beat the crap out of uh, Preston Vance. That looked brutal. It almost looked like a shoot. If it was done super well, I'm very impressed by that. Yeah, it was done. It, it was tremendous. Moxley leaves. He kicks the railing again, and it looked like it hit some dude right in the dick. <laughs> Just <laughs> so, bang! Yeah. And I was like, oof. That's so terrible. Now we got this Cody promo. Right? Cody comes out. He's cutting this like baby face promo. And then I didn't understand. He was like, there's a move I could have done. Pedigree. He's talking about a pedigree. Yeah. But I don't think everybody got it. It was very subversive. Because he was like, but that's an easy way out. I'm like, do you mean that that's like the most powerful move to do in pro wrestling? Like, you just put Hunter over. Yeah. You just said that this man possesses the most powerful move to beat anybody with. Because he's, I think, I think the subversiveness of it is. Yes, he possesses the most powerful move because he writes the book, right? He's got the pencil, basically. So got when it. Hunter puts himself over, he's over, right? Got it. I got it. So Cody could do, I think that the illusion was, I could have done that because I'm an EVP. I could write my own story. I could challenge for the title and it would be easy. But then him going, I'll never turn. Was weird. A very subversive. Very much like I don't think I've ever seen a promo like that, where the acknowledgement of like I'm a good guy. I'm not going to be a bad guy. There's no re- there's no reason for me to be. Yeah, a but bad it might guy. it might be to make you boom even more Absolutely. to finally turn him. And then when you turn him, you know what happens? Absolutely, they're going to cheer. Absolutely, cool heel. Cool heel turns around. Uh, I I got a I got a kick out of it. Um, I like Andrade teaming up with. Malachi Black. I like you. Well, I mean, they're kind of like related. They are kind of related. Like, there's like weird, like their NXT run, I think, put them in that weird Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. Yeah, they're married. They're, they're yeah. Sa- and also, uh, yeah. you know, Zelina was Andrade's manager. Right. And they were very close. Yeah. And Zelina and Alistair are married. Yeah. So there, there is this relationship between them. I do like how Andrade called out Cody's neck tattoo. I thought that he was did. Hysterical. He goes, he goes, you made stupid decisions like that neck tattoo. Uh, so good. And um, I also, I'm a big fan of Malachi Black doing The Mist. Uh, for those of you that don't I know, like it. huge fan, this guy, huge fan of the Japanese Mist. 
I'm going to miss everybody. Miss everybody. I always go threaten around. my friends. Like, one day we're going to be at a barbecue, and I'm just going to hit you in the face with food. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got the, uh, the main event, the Elite, Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Matt, and Nick versus the Dark Order. Dark Order was dressed up like cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Elite were dressed up like the Ghostbusters. So Kenny good. calls <laughs> for Ninja Turtle shell shock <sighs> so with, good. The, with the proton packs. What did he say? I didn't see this. So at one point, you know, they're, they're kicking ass, they're kicking ass. Uh, they get the Dark Order in the ring. They're days in the ring. Uh, they put the proton packs on. Kenny, Kenny screams out shell shocked. And they do basically the move from the first Ninja Turtles where they smush um, the Foot Clan. Where they do the back to back stuff, Got it. the four turtles smushing back to back. Got it. Which I liked. I, I like that. Too. I like that nerd shit. This I, is a I, lot listen, of. Listen, I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan. So this I'm was a fan. lot of fun. I like. I the... wonder if there'll be Ninja Turtles next year. Oh, so good. Next week, why not? Who'll be Master Splinter? Brandon Cutler. Brandon Cutler would have to. Brandon Cutler was the horse's ass. Brandon Cutler was our horse's ass. Adam Adam Page was the Michelin Man. <laughs> Stay uh, of Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow Man. It's the Stay of Marshmallow Man. It's not the Michelin Man. Not the Michelin Man. It's the Michelin Man. Have you seen Ghostbusters? Yes. It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Okay. Man. I mean, it kind of looks like the Michelin Man, though. You need glasses. MG needs glasses and also needs to learn how to read. They look exactly the same. They do not look exactly the same. One looks like a mummy, Dude. and the other one looks like a Marshmallow Man with a sailor scarf and hat on. I, I <laughs> may, Maybe they all just look alike to me. Are you doing... You're a dad, so I think yeah. you're looking at it through dad's eyes. I am looking through it you're through like, dad's eyes. Well, this is the same thing. Yeah, Tony the Tiger, same guy. Uh, it's the same thing. Same thing. It's when you when your kid wants Optimus and you get him like a G.I. Joe. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, can I tell you, I always thought that Megatron and Optimus Prime have the opposite names. Mm-hmm. I feel felt that Optimus Prime should be Megatron and Megatron should be Optimus Prime. Really? Yeah, I always felt that Optimus Prime is a bad guy name. <sighs> I never th- I never thought about that. Uh, that's how I, 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 I oh, as you. a kid as a kid, like four year old me, I remember thinking mm-hmm. I'm and it, and I still have to think about which is which. Wow. Yeah, my brain can't switch it, and it bothers me that one is named Optimus Prime and he's not the opposite. You got that dad brain. It would also be weird if Hangman showed up as the Michelin Man when there's a clear Ghostbusters theme. I I always thought it was the same thing. <laughs> have I, you seen Ghostbusters? Yes, I love it. Zord, the guy in the mirror that that winks at you, right, and comes to life. What isn't that? Isn't that how Ghostbusters start? And then oh, they go I down got, in the sewers. I'm leaving. This is my last show. <laughs> they go down the sewers. They meet this. They meet a rat, and the rat makes them pizza, and they train. Are you thinking about a combination of uh, Ninja Turtles no, and man, Ratatouille? It was, it was, no, man. I, I think it was Zool. You're it's, thinking about Zool. I, I, it is Zool. Yeah, Zool, Zool, Zord, yeah, Zordon. Power right? Rage. I don't Zordon. think you've seen Ghostbusters. Somebody get this guy a copy of Ghostbusters. And Holy then the guy shit. with like the black th- mask comes out and he's like, I'm your father. <laughs> and then he chops his arm off. He falls into like a river and then like his body parts start. Isn't that all the same? That's all. It's, you know what? You're right. Okay. Everything's, you. everything's you. one thing. It's the same. That's, that's it. Uh, AW Rampage lineup. We're going to hurry uh-huh. it up now because we're running out of time. Dan- uh, Brian Danielson versus Eddie Kingston for the uh, in an AEW World <laughs> Championship Eliminator Tournament. Excited Dante Martin, that. Matt Seidel. Excited. Trick or treat match. Dr. Britt Baker. Versus Abaddon. Oh, that's going to be good. Um, let's see. AW Dynamite for 1-3 mm. lineup. Cody versus Andrade. TBS Championship Tournament. Anna mm. J versus Jamie Hayter. John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy for the AW uh, World Championship Eliminator Tournament. And uh, I think that's it for notes. For news, a little bit of housekeeping. Guys, mm. do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. We're almost at 6,000 subscribers. They're exciting. We're getting there. We're going to be at 10K soon. Uh, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. You get a lot of exclusive content there. MG Geek and, and Rich have been working hard. And by the way, this pays the bills here, man. I got to cut these guys some money. MG Geek, Jonathan, they're busting their balls working for us. So uh, that that's what goes to them with all these production changes and everything. It's it's all them. So help us out. Starting November se- 7th. I was going to say 2nd. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Starting November 7th, I... We'll be the new host for Wrestling Observer Live on Sundays, going from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. East. Mm. My first guest co-host is none other than Rich Dambolian. Hello. And in studio, Garrett Gonzalez. He's going to be in New York. Uh, do you want to go out after that for a couple drinks? Sure. Like by myself? Yeah, by yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. All right. Let's do uh, it. Get your questions ready, guys. We're going to try to get this on the screen. So Rich has actually, MGG, you have the control. So you know what? 
Well, we're gonna do. Uh, what, what do we got here? All right, you wanna you wanna push a uh, a question? Let's Rich? see. I got. Um, we got a at, at the top of the show. We got a nice five dollars from Charlie. So thank you very much, Charlie. We All appreciate right. the sentiment. Um, MG, can you? Yeah, like here what Andrew go. said. Can you handle it, and then we'll figure it out? Yeah. So do you want to read it? Yeah. Give me two seconds. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is from Twitter. This is from M. Canaris. Okay, there you go. Close. There we go. I think I got it. And this is a this is a good question. Actually, MG, um, the full question is not appearing on screen. Yes, it does not appear because it's a long one. With Cody Omega and the mm. Bucks going from headlining ROH cards to leaving uh, in mass form to AEW, how much are they? And I cannot see the rest. We're trying something new here, guys. Let me find. Okay. Well, uh, I think you could see it if you log into that portal. Yeah, you could see it in the portal. What I'm doing. We're trying something very new here, guys. So, like, please bear with us. This is uh, this is the first time we're doing this, and uh, we want it to rock. With Cody Omega and the Bucks going from headlining Ring of Honor cards to leaving in mass to form AEW, how much are they responsible for the downfall of ROH? Also, was it foolish in retrospect for ROH to help them get all in off the ground? I don't think so. I think ROH benefited tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, their boom period came from the whole Bullet Club stuff. You know, the, th this boom period, you know, 2014 on, uh, came from the Bullet Club stuff. They genuinely benefited mm -hmm. from it. Uh, I don't think it was a negative. Uh, I do think that it, it, the Kenny and the, and the Buck stuff was more New Japan success mm -hmm. than Ring of Honor success. I think it was a nice addition to get them in Ring of Honor. Yeah. It kind of met the needs for a lot of people to like be able to show up to a Ring of Honor show and see those guys. Mm -hmm. But I, I, regardless of them going there or not or working hard, I think the Bullet Club would have gotten over the way that it did. Uh, maybe maybe not as much if without North American access. But it was it was a really hot property. Talented like, guys. I didn't really watch a lot of the Ring of Honor stuff with them. I watched more of the New Japan stuff with them. Yeah, I I actually made it a point to catch the Ring of Honor stuff when they were on it. You yeah, know, that was the draw for me. Yeah. And and at times, uh, Planet Peacock himself, Dalton Planet. Castle. Oh yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> Dalton Castle. All right, what's the next question? Let's see here. Uh, with Oscar, this is from Supersonic X. With Oscar remaining on the Raw roster, what's the reason why she's staying on Raw? Um, I don't know. She's hurt right now, right? Uh, yeah. Isn't she's rehabbing like something, right? Yeah. All right. So Rich will, Rich will select the questions. Mg. Yeah, Here's I'm what, kind of yeah looking through them here. Uh, Vibor with a question. Ask Mattman. Hello, guys. Do you think WWE might pull the pl pull out a swerve by taking the WWE title off Biggie to make a Roman Seth? Uh, I can't see the rest. That's the question. I I got it. Um, no, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think I think the story with Biggie holding that title and he needs to hold that title a little bit more, right? Oh yeah, dude. A hundred percent. Uh, MG, just handle the question. Yeah, you handle it. You handle it, and then, and then Rich will read it. Well, yeah, I'll read it. Well, this again, this is very new, guys. Where we incorporated this new system yeah. today, and we're gonna make it seamless into the future. We're uh, we're beta testing today. Yeah. All right. Next question. There we go. All right, hit it, guys. He's taking a little bit here. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, this is from another question from Vibor. What will be the next time we can see John Cena in WWE? Um. I don't know, but I know he's going to be back. He's coming back for some stuff. Yeah, I think... I don't know exactly when they're going to do it, but where does he fit in right now? Once once Peacemaker comes out, he's going to be doing the promo tour, and that's probably when you'll see him pop up. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Good good guy. All right, next question. Here we go. You need that finger on the trigger for these. Yeah, he needs, he needs to push these quicker. Because I'm running out of time. Here. I wonder... All right, you know what? Why don't you just go down the question? I'm, I'm going to yeah. skip this. I don't have time. Yeah. You know what it is? I yeah. wonder if this you... Is t this is stalling and it's falling apart. I'm not going to do the questions I... like this. <laughs> I wonder if you cue them up. Now, don't pull them up. I'm done. I'm done with this stupid thing. All right. <laughs> well, just read the questions like we normally do. John Gorman. Does it, doesn't it feel very similar to how WCW folded up? It just seems really hard to believe they will stay afloat. Who? Uh, Ring of Honor? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, when WCW went... Ah, you know what, though? WCW was like very chaotic mm -hmm. by the way you know there's a there's an interesting story to the wcw death of wcw thing yeah you know the narrative the wwe paid like three million dollars and it was like a steal mm -hmm. not really because you know wwe also there was like a back-end deal with turner like their marketing department right and it was like a 20 million dollar marketing mm -hmm. thing where they had to allocate mar their marketing to turner's team to market for their pay-per-views and tv i don't think people realize yeah. that 
I, I don't think a lot of people know that. You know, that's a funny thing. That's also like one of those uh, tell a wrestler, tell a friend yeah. type deals where it's like people came out of the woodwork. I think Flair came out of the woodwork and was like, I could have bought. Yeah, it. everybody did. Jericho was like, I could have bought WCW. I could have bought it for a million dollars. Yeah. They but a uh, terrible work for every person. Uh, John, million dollars. Million dollars. Uh, Jonathan asks, is Trish Stratus coming out of retirement? Uh, who said that Trish is going to be doing something? It was a little blip this week, right? Uh, I would love to see Trish come back, do something. Yeah, me too. Why not? Uh, she's think. judging uh, Canada's Got Talent. So I think a lot of people are talking about Trish. I don't know. She's done a lot. She, mm -hmm. Her last thing, she was cool with Lita. Yeah. You know, if, if she ever does anything again, that's cool. If not, then I'm, I was satisfied with it. All right. Uh, this is from Rated C. Will takeovers only be on TV instead of Peacock or gone completely? Say that again. What's going to be on TV? Will takeovers only be on TV instead of Peacock or gone completely? Um, you know, if they put it on Peacock, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't see them doing major arenas, you know, I, I can't see that happening anymore, but if they do a takeover on TV and they, they do the quality of what they did with Halloween Havoc, maybe turn it up a notch. Yes. I think that's fantastic. Hammerstein. Yeah, you could do the Hammerstein. They could do Hammerstein, yeah. Terminal 5, the Something smaller small. venues, you know, uh, they were at that peak when they were doing Barclays, man. Uh, P1, do you, th what do you think AEW should do with CM Punk? slow build I, I think everybody has has already said that mm -hmm. his goal is to yeah I think he said his goal is to win the title and da Brian Danielson has said the same thing my mm -hmm. goal is to become AEW world champion you know I think that what they're doing with Punk is warming him up yes and I think that's part of the story where like he's saying like oh I feel like shit after every match mm -hmm. I'm not used to it it's not like getting back on the bicycle you know you're gonna feel I think that's all playing part in the rebuilding of CM Punk I think so too. I think I've heard a lot of uh, gripes and people complaining online. I've seen it on social media that they don't like uh, this happy go lucky punk. How do you feel about that? I think it's going to build into something else. I do think like once this, once the honeymoon period is over on whatever this is going on right now, which I, I enjoy it. I like seeing the guy back. I'm not going to complain. I still like his in ring work. Love his promos. Love my commentary. Little, uh, let me give a little tidbit here. Sean Ross Sapp tweeted out that uh, they pulled Charlotte from media this week. Oh, very an hour ago. Very interesting. Um, I do think a punk heel turn, tremendous. Uh, I, I think it'd be great. Yeah, punk heel absolutely. turn. Pu we'll get the dream match that we all wanted. An Iron Man match between a heel punk and a babyface Brian Danielson. Maron. 65 Marons, Andrew. Maron. Um, you do know, you... I said that to Jess. Oh, yeah. Uh, I walked in yesterday. She was wearing something very nice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Maro. And I did one of these. I, I love like... that there's an emoji for this. What did she say? She liked it. She was into <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, do you think Brian and Punk will make some sort of appearance for Final Battle? That's from Carissa. Our friend Carissa, who Our hates friend you. Carissa that hates me. From, uh, from the... Uh, Ozone Park. Oh, from the Ozone Park. From the deepest and... and hardest section of queens mm -hmm. south ozone were you gonna say dankest dankest <laughs> section of queens south ozone um Ayaz is an ozone boy too i don't know if you know that no i didn't i did yeah. not know the grape was from ozone the grape is actar is from he's from howard beach he lived next to the Gotties. Oh, that's why you had a blowout growing up yeah. <laughs> do you know the joke about do you know canal's joke about uh being born and raised in queens so mm -hmm. he was and he's like i was born in queen i was raised in queens i was brought up italian and he says that he's a gwindian that's pretty good. And he, and he was in high school. He was, a, he was big time. He had the blowout. He had, a, he had the whole thing going. It's a great joke he had. That's a good joke. Yeah. That's a good joke. He died, right? I.S.? No, Kunal. Kunal, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> oh, man. R.I.P. Um, let's see. Uh, Joe asks, I want Andrew's prediction on a Wyndham. What do you know, dude? Show me your cojones. Make the call. I, I said everything I, I'm going to say on, on his situation. <laughs> show me your cojones. Even he says, show me your cojones. You want me to show you? I'll show you yeah. my cojones. You ready? It's going to take my nuts out. I think there after Exotica got to your brain. Oh, Exotica got to me. You're like, you're just ready. My blood be, is poisoned. You're ready to be nasty. <laughs> oh, man. You have no idea. How nasty were you when you came home? <laughs> uh, well, not nasty at all. It took me four and a half hours to get back from Jersey. Oh, Lord. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, apparently, Trish is teasing a match with Sasha Banks. Uh, this is from Mr. Big Dude 912. If you had to guess right now, 
what do you see as the main events of both nights of Razzlemania? Uh, I would have Roman on one main event, mm-hmm. right? For sure. And then... Ladies one night, men one the other night. If you do the ladies, right? Let, yeah. I'm, I'm going to play... You know, you know how this works? Yeah. Goyles. Girls. If you got the Goyles, <laughs> as MG Geek puts it, I would have night one, I would do Rhonda... And Becky. Yes. Night one main event. Okay. Night two. Dwayne. I mean, listen, if, if you could do it, I would do Dwayne and, and you want to guarantee, you know, close to 100,000 sales per night. Ooh. If, if you do this, I'm going to say you're going to get about night one, you'll get like 90 something thousand. Mm-hmm. Night two, you'll continue that 90 something thousand. Okay. And WWE will say they had 200,000 people in attendance for the weekend. For, you know, the most, most, uh, I mean, you're getting like North Korea numbers now for attendance. You know what I mean? They're going to be gloating about the half a million people that watched that, that were there live. That's a reference into that North Korean show that just in North, yeah. no, just North Korea. They okay. just don't know. Don't, they don't do math properly. I, uh, I think, I think if you swap it, it might be interesting. Roman and Bro- Roman and, uh, rock night yeah, one. I mean, if, if that is, I, I don't, the last I heard, they mm. really want that for LA. Like they really want that for the LA show, so maybe you know I don't know. You got you need a blockbuster main event. <sighs> Next question from Estilo Latino: How healthy is MLW right now? Yeah, yeah, uh, right now. no. Right, <laughs> I, like at this very moment, I think I think Court's doing quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I think they're doing great. I think MLW has kind of replaced that Ring of Honor position, and I think there's yes. going to be more. There's there's more to come out from from MLW the next I want to say couple months. You're going to see a lot more MLW talk next few months. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, we got time for one more. All so right, whatever the next question is, we're gonna answer it, and it can't be about Andrew's cojones. I can't do this. Uh, the live chat thing. What do you mean? Uh, the timing. We need to figure that out. You mean the uh, the pop up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need to. No, I'm out saying the in the chat room, guys. Yeah. One more question. Give it all you got. We got a bunch of people watching. Uh, does anyone see a random flicker on Rich's camera? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we see that. Uh, or is it a ghost? It's a ghost, man. It's a ghoul. It's a ghoul. It's a zombie. There's something behind me. I watched a weird movie this week called uh, Daniel Isn't Real. Uh, all right. I it, is it like a Dear Zachary type document? Is it? What's did Dear, you watch the documentary? What's Dear Zachary? I cried, man. What is that? It's the saddest freaking documentary you will ever see in your life. It's about a father that's trying to get custody of his kid. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this documentary has been out for like 15 years at this point. No. And the mother, it's in Canada. It just shows you how like the, the proceedings are in Canada. It's like terrible. Mm-hmm. And the mother ends up killing the kid Ooh. as he's fighting for custody of the kid. That's crazy. Terrible story. No, this is not a documentary. This is a movie about this dude who grew up with an imaginary friend who turns out to be uh, something demonic. Who's played by uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger's kid. It's very good. All right. Uh, Mr. Big Dude, you think they stretch Betty? Uh, would, do you think they could stretch Becky and Bianca to WrestleMania? I mean, it's WWE. They, they, they could stretch anything as long as, mm. you know, they're the masters of rematches. You yeah. know, it's like you're going to already we've seen this match how many times Becky and uh, yeah. and Bianca, right? Three. It's the third Something time like in some way. By the time that Bianca wins it, you're not going to give a crap. Last question. Yes. Where is Elias? Oh, he's getting a he's getting a whole new makeover, new packaging. Yeah. Elias is becoming a new Elias. No more of the old Elias. No more guitar guy. No more. Yeah. yeah no more drifter. No I more drifter. Drift. The drifter was perfect, man. I, I was always a fan of him. He was great mm. for getting heat and he got over. And unfortunately for him, that's all they thought he was. Imagine if they bring him back as like a hobo. <laughs> well, they they tried that with Baron Corbin. No, he was just he was he was a home. He was like a homeless, like down in his luck. I mean, like a hobo, like like a n- vagabond, d- like a classic 1930s hobo, like hopping the trains. He's got the he pretty much had that the sack over the, Didn't over he have the back. That? It was pretty much it. That's true. He was El Vagabondo. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. I think that's it, right? We Later. ran long. We did a show. Yep. I got to get to work. Yep. I got 50 Cent tonight at Sapphire. Beautiful. If your guys are in town, go check out yeah. 50 Cent at Sapphire. It's, uh, Rolling Loud is in town also. Oh, man. That Long Island Railroad coming back is going to be a nightmare. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be like Exotica Part 2. Exotica Part 2. There you go. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we'll see you all next week. I'm Matt, man. See you later. Later.